G'day guys and uh, welcome to another video. Uh, this is actually the first video that I've done for uh, the year 2017. So um, hope everyone's had a good uh, Christmas and New Year and all the rest of that. Um, and uh, today this will be another update on Glenmore. been a while since I did a, a video last um, so I've got quite a lot to get through in this uh, video uh, you know how it is you slowly work away on things over a long period of time and suddenly you realize oh I've actually done quite a lot so um, I'm kind of having one of those moments right now guys so you'll have to bear with me um, and uh, so I'll show you what we've done so I figured for this uh, I might as well start off with the the obvious and that is that uh, since last time, hills have started to develop on the layout. Um, as you can see, obviously along along here by the signal box and in this corner as well. And uh, that uh, hill is, is actually made out of a very uh, useful um, resource which is, I think it's called just like foam. And it's um, kind of like a, uh, a sponge type material. And it's very, uh, very solid and very brittle, and so it makes it nice and easy to sculpt. Um, and it's just uh, fantastic stuff. It's very cheap. I actually got mine from work uh, for free because it came uh, in a delivery as pack, uh, like packaging. And uh, the uh, the foreman was very happy to let me uh, take that home um, free of charge. So I. Uh, use that opportunity well and now I have uh, ample loads of it so I'm very pleased with that and um, as you can see we're in the very early stages of um, actually making these um, making these hills um, but yes it's a uh, it's coming along quite well and once that's all done and sculpted it'll then be covered with a layer of uh, of um, plaster cloth and uh, then of course have static grass and all the rest added so um, yes like I said early stages so moving right along the next thing that's uh, been happening to the layer is I've been doing a little bit of work on the good shed uh, basically what I've been doing is I've applied a few posters to it as you can see just here and I've also added these uh, lamps to the side of it and I've just started uh, colouring in some of the, uh, the bricks in uh, different shades uh, of brown just to give it that sort of weathered look and um, make it look uh, a lot less uh, perfect you could say because uh, you know these are uh, well it's obviously the layout set sort of in the in the 30s and uh, well a lot of things weren't perfect in those days so uh, that's sort of the look I'm going for and I think it's come out alright. On the topic of the good shed I have actually added quite a few details to the inside of it as well so I've had this wee baggage trolley with a crate on it and this wee scale here, a uh, set of scales, uh, and they are from a Dapol kit I believe. And I've also cheated a little bit and I got hold of these Woodland Scenics uh, crates and uh, general goods uh, loads, uh, which come ready made, ready painted, decals already applied, very well detailed, because um, I figured that uh, otherwise uh, to get this level of detail uh, by hand it was going to take a long time and I thought I saw them there they were in my price range and I thought oh you know what it's not going to hurt is it uh, to, to cut a few corners on on buying something ready made so um did that and I'm very very pleased with the result uh, obviously the good shed won't have its roof off all the time uh, probably won't even have the roof off during the show but it's sort of something for the more uh, eagle-eyed um, enthusiast or even just a member of the public to notice when the lights on show so nice wee bit of detail there uh, even if you won't see it so moving right along I have also uh, purchased some very nice uh, Great Western oil lamps from Gage Master now I believe these are the same ones that uh, DCC Concepts produce I don't quite understand how it all works between DCC Concepts and Gage Master They've obviously got uh, some kind of deal where Gage Master have sort of rebranded them as their own and uh, are selling them, but uh, 
either way, it means that uh, I was able to get hold of them for a, a much, much cheaper price. Uh, so either way, I'm not complaining. And um, I'm very, very happy with them. They're extremely well detailed um, for, you know, for the price you pay for them. And I think they're very, um, they're very sort of fine scaly, which is sort of the vibe I'm wanting this layout to, to produce. Uh, so definitely a very good purchase there. And um, I recommend them to anyone who, uh, who wants lamps on their, their layouts because they, they do also produce them in uh, all the liveries of the big four, I believe. And you can get different types with like twist posts and you've got gas lamps as well, which have the taller window, pa uh, the taller glass panes. So, uh, no, I definitely recommend those. Um, so they, they'll be looking good uh, once the lay, you know, once they go in permanently on the layout. So another thing uh, that's changed on the layout is that uh, since the last time the station building has actually changed a, a fair wee bit. Um, what I've been doing is I've been sort of working on um, sort of the aesthetics now uh, of the building. So we've I've got the main structure built, I still need to complete the roof, but the main structure's built, and so I sort of started detailing it up a little bit. I've um, stuck a GWR notice board just in between the two windows there, and a few other posters and bits and pieces have gone on, um, which I think have made a, a, a great improvement to to the, um, the building, um, and it, it just makes it look a little bit uh, more presentable, which I, I really like. Also something I just quickly forgot to mention was that I have also coloured the uh, the end uh, stones and the uh, window and door surrounding stones in a red brick type colour. The reason for this was again to sort of uh, spruce the building up a little bit. They were just a grey colour and it wasn't, it looked fine but it, you know it wasn't really standing out too much but that red is a really uh, Oh, it's a very red brick type colour. It, it was one I mixed up myself, which I still have loads of, because I uh, kept it in a container. Um, but it's a, a bit more vibrant, and it really, it really uh, brings the station building out. It makes it stand out a bit more, which I, which is what I'm really after. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, it was something I just sort of fluked, really, and um, yeah, it was a, as Bob Ross would say, it was a happy accident. So now down at the far end of the, uh, the layout, I've um, been working on uh, doing the actual platform edges, as you can see around here like so. Um, that's just done with the uh, Wells stone wall material plastic card stuff that they produce. Uh, and that has obviously been painted as well to match the rest of the buildings, um, excluding that one. But um, yeah, I've just been doing that, um, and it's coming along quite good. We've got all the uh, all the pieces uh, for that cut to do the length of the platform. Now we just actually need to uh, paint them and stick them all on. But I've made a start in this far corner here. So something else I've been working on uh, recently as well is the actual paving slabs on the platform. Now, for those of you who have seen my video that I did on uh, sort of doing up beaching in station you'll know that I use these paving slabs from Metcalf uh, around the to line the edges of the platform um, and then I basically from there uh, fill in the remaining area with ballast except for around the actual station building where I put more paving in so the plan is to do that on this platform as well because I think it looks quite nice um, it's something a lot of the earlier stations had. Um, well, I'll need to believe at least. So I'll definitely be doing that on here. It's just uh, a case of getting around to it because I need to uh, order in some more. Uh, I'll probably use the Wills uh, Victoria paving for around the station building. And at present, I only have about one sheet of it, so I need to get more of that. And then I can do that and fill in all the ballast on the platform and um, should be quite good. Uh, that'll be the platform virtually done then, which is quite a nice thought really because there's a lot to get done on this layout. Now something that the really uh, eagle-eyed uh, viewer may have noticed is that the, uh, 
tracks actually between the uh, where the two baseboards join on this don't actually uh, all line up all that well. These ones here do, and I've actually put uh, two screws through there and soldered the rails to them so that they hold nice and tight, but the other ones are going to need fixing down. So for the actual fixing of the track on these sections I've decided to opt with the uh, PCB uh, copper clad fiberboard um, option for these ones which I never actually thought about when I did the ones with the screws. Um, basically this is like a piece of it here. It's the stuff to make PCBs out of and all you have to do is take a piece of it, uh, cut it to the size of a sleeper, cut down the middle of it so that it separates the two copper pads, um, and then you just slot it, remove the sleeper near the edge, slot it down like so, then the idea is you drill a few holes in it and stick it down with a few track pins, that's nice and sturdy, you solder it on, uh, solder it onto the rails and you've got a really firm uh, way of holding your track all in alignment. So I'll be doing that over the next few weeks as well to try and get things all lined up and sturdy and then um, yeah then hopefully be able to uh, run some trains again on this uh, and it's a more permanent fix then so should be good. Actually guys just a quick flash update I have decided to go ahead and test out one of these false sleepers. Um, as you can see I've soldered the rails to that and also the dropper wires as well which I then cut grooves so the wires to go down and so they'll sit beneath the level of the ballast and so that hopefully they won't show and they'll just disappear off the edge of the sleeper once it's all ballasted so hopefully that works out alright and uh, now I just need to paint it with my track weathering pen upside down, there we go yeah so another thing we've been doing uh, on the layout is also sticking down sand to where the road's going to be to make a nice coarse road surface. Now uh, what you see in front of you, uh, the grey colour is only a test paint colour. It's the colour I use for the road on Redfern and Beaching End. Um, I will not be using it on this because yes it does look a bit heinous uh, with you know, in the sort of area that it is, I think I'm going to opt for a much, much lighter, uh, creamy brown sort of colour, uh, and have, you know, static grass up the middle of it and make it just seem like a real sort of outback uh, country lane going to the station sort of thing. Um, so I won't be actually, that's not the final coat, um, but I think it does actually look quite good um, as a coarser kind of road finish than uh, just the flat uh, timber and of course it does also kind of act like a bit of a uh, a mask as such because you can have little joints like this where the uh, where the road starts to sort of slope away and you just cover it with this stuff you know you probably fill out the gaps cover it with this stuff and you just wouldn't even know there's a joint there it's, it just flows really really well so I'll be definitely using that uh, sand effect probably in the yard as well um, where there's a lot of sort of uh, flat areas that just could use that little bit of extra kind of uh, coursing up you could say uh, rather than just having flat baseboard yet again just adds that little it, it's not much but it adds that little extra effect of just that you know nothing is quite uh, perfectly flat uh, especially you know in a yard situation, you know, as it would be in the real world as well, so uh, that's sort of what I think I'll do for that and hopefully it'll look alright. Um, I might need a few opinions on that, but uh, at this stage that's that will be going ahead. Something slightly off uh, topic now uh, that I've also been doing, because I like to sort of fill you guys in on what else I'm up to, not just on the layout sometimes. Um, a big project I've been undertaking recently is repainting a lot of my engines, not completely, uh, just um, quite heavily inspired by quite a few people I've seen on the internet, uh, Brockwell Lane um, for one, but um, 
that's going with going in with all, a lot of my engines and repainting all the areas on them that were, that were black into a dark grey. Um, it doesn't make much of a difference, and it's only noticeable. Oh, it's, it's noticeable in, in basically all lighting conditions except for dark. Uh, the camera's probably not picking it up hugely well, but um, just painting them in grey because what that does is it's just like really low key weathering, um, and to the eye it looks quite good and also something I've noticed about doing this is it actually brings out the green in the locos quite a lot more than it, do, it did when they were black uh, so basically uh, I've been doing that and it's actually made them really made the models uh, look a surprising lot better um, something as simple as that and suddenly the green just really uh, you know strikes the eye a lot more because it just does it brings it right out and I think that's quite quite nice really it's quite important especially when you know you, you're operating at a show and you got you want people to be paying a lot of attention to your models and doing this really you know somehow it actually enhances them quite a lot so I'm very pleased with that and I'll be continuing to do that with a quite a few of my models but here obviously you can see the one of my moguls that I've done it to uh, I've also done it to one of my prairies both the panniers have had it um, and yeah, I'll just continue to smash them out, I guess. Um, but yeah, really, really, really nice. Uh, I'm very happy with that. As you can see in this shot here, I've finally been able to get the camera at an angle where you can see it in these relatively dark lighting conditions uh, with the prairie, where I've actually painted the black areas uh, in a dark grey. And you can just see on the smoke box there, it's uh, showing up. So I'm quite pleased I was able to get that. I really should uh, take some photos during the daylight hours um, and maybe stick them over overlapping this video uh, and that that might actually help you guys actually see it better but uh, now I'm quite quite happy with that um, I've also painted the uh, the buffers silver with a um, with one of those metallic silver markers that you use for writing on black paper with um, so that, that, those are actually really good investments those you know the cheap uh, I got a pack where you got a silver one and a goldy coloured one, although the goldy coloured one's not much use to me because it's not a very brassy type colour, it's very um, almost like a fluoro gold type colour so I won't be using that very much but it's still good to have just in case I ever need it. So um, yeah I recommend those, they're, they're quite good. Well guys I think that just about wraps up everything really, uh, if there's anything that you think I've missed or anything that you've well, I would like to see more of, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, I really appreciate it when people give me advice and tips and stuff. It's uh, fantastic because I think that's what YouTube's really, you know, that's what doing this is all about is, you know, being able to share ideas with people and uh, people sharing ideas with me. And I, I think it's really good when you get that, uh, get that kind of uh, personal touch, you could say, when, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, discuss things and help each other out. And I think that's one of the one of the beauties of YouTube really is uh, you can you can do that you know you can uh, let people know what, what's going on and I certainly enjoy doing that so um, yeah if there's anything uh, any comments or questions or anything let me know uh, also if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more of the layout um, or if you just haven't already uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button I always appreciate uh, when people subscribe I'm getting up close to 400 now so uh, I think I've got about 392, so uh, let's try and get it up to that 400, eh guys? Eh? Eh? So uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it won't be uh, so long between videos this time, uh, seeing as uh, there's a lot going on with the lad at the moment, so uh, updates should be a regular thing again now. Um, now I'm back into the swing of things. Uh, anyway guys, see you later. Bye for now.